Hey, what's up everyone? John the Geek here and today I'm going to be showing you what I've done with this Raspberry Pi in place of this once very expensive TV broadcasting equipment. There's a little bit of backstory as to why I'm in this room and what it is that I'm doing here and why I did this. Uh, there'll be a link in the description to a Google Plus post that I did and I'll try to be a little bit more descriptive and elaborate on uh, more details in that post. Uh, but essentially what I wanted to show you here is what exactly this equipment does and why or where I placed this Raspberry Pi running XBMC software, um, which is behind here. There's another Raspberry Pi that's running right now. And what you're seeing on this particular monitor is actually what's being broadcast right now out of the Raspberry Pi. But first and foremost, I'm going to talk about uh, what this equipment is and to the best of my knowledge from what I've been able to kind of figure out and what a few people have vaguely told me what this equipment does and stuff. Um, basically what we have here is uh, it takes multimedia content that's been produced and it's produced in another room. Very fancy high-end equipment uh, going on in other places. Um, so it takes the produced content in the form of most likely these mini DV tapes as well as these other types of tapes here. I don't even know what this kind of tape is called exactly but uh, the system here for starting off for playback of uh, video content we have these tape players here I call them tape players it's just what I am figuring out what they are it says DVC Pro Digital Video Cassette right very high-end stuff about a decade ago and so the video content plays out of here and it goes to a switcher and I'll show you what that is uh, in a little bit and right above it, it has a uh, CD player that just plays regular CD audio, not MP3s. They weren't around yet when this device came out. And so one of the tape players actually is uh, busted and it just eats up some tapes like it did with this tape right here. And so uh, we're not using that anymore. And then uh, over next to it, we have a monitor to display what's being broadcast or what uh, you can see um, that's playing right now. We also have another TV up there, and I'll show you what um, that is in a second. And underneath that is a computer, and that's an automation computer, and I'll get to that in a second. But uh, we have a couple of uh, TV monitors here, again, to just view what's uh, being displayed. Uh, more monitors up there. These are various uh, sources that can be played. And then over to the right here, this is the carousel. They call it the carousel. All it did was just play slideshows. Look, back then, 10 years ago, playing pictures in a slideshow was an amazing thing all right uh, and so that's what this computer did it had no audio outs but it just had a video out and it just played pictures much like what you're seeing rolling through here um, and uh, the computer that's up there it's actually busted there's another computer that I put inside in its place uh, to get that thing working and so right down here there's also another computer and what this does is that it was a programming or automated system where it took all of the sources here video audio slideshows and uh, made a sort of like a playlist and uh, you would set up times what time you wanted to play video what time you wanted to play music and what time you wanted to play a slideshow and uh, it automated everything uh, through that system and it would run everything here right and so the next thing I'm going to show you now is uh, right behind here where I plug the Raspberry Pi device and where I have it set up and uh, let's take a look at that real quick alright so here we are in the back of the system here and this is the Raspberry Pi that I've got going on here and so I'll just show you what I have plugged in here right here is where we have the RCA out to the BNC that's pretty much the cable and system that uh, they have been using and I have an adapter that connects converts the RCA to a BNC connection Right, and then uh, on the USB ports we have a IR blaster. I'm using a uh, Windows remote, a media center remote to uh, uh, control the Raspberry Pi, the menus and all that. And then we have uh, the uh, flash drive there that has the video content on there. And then this audio uh, out to XLR adapter and I'll show you that in a second on the other end. And then we have the uh, memory card that has the operating system on there. And then what I have here connected to it is a, a battery pack. And so this is normally a backup power battery pack for your cell phones. It's micro USB, so that's what I have plugged in to the uh, Raspberry Pi there. And then 
powering the battery pack uh, is a cable USB, micro USB cable to the socket, to that wall outlet there, right? So that's um, sort of a uninterruptible power supply, I guess, if the power would ever go out, everything should kick back on automatically and the video should continuously be playing uh, without any interruption or me having to come in here to replay things uh, because it's just on an endless loop of uh, video content right and so what I have it plugged in place of is this VHS player that was broken I mentioned earlier that it was just eating up tapes and so this VHS player had a uh, video out which is right down here that was the video out that's where I took the BNC connection and then right below these uh, connections right here is the XLR cables that was in there that was the video of oh, the audio out and so what I have in its place, which is right down here, these are the XLR cables that was plugged in the VHS, is the audio outs. And so I have this cable that adapts the XLR, stereo XLR, that uh, plugs into the Raspberry Pi right there. So this cable was about 12 bucks on Amazon, uh, which is pretty convenient. That's a 12 foot cable. So it works just fine. And so uh, that's pretty much it for how this um, Raspberry Pi is connected to the back there. Uh, now I'm gonna show you on the other end uh, where the this all this video feed goes to, uh, to the switchboard. All right, so this is a switchboard that allows you to choose the various video sources coming from the station, which is again, right over there. And so you would basically choose, here's the uh, carousel system. If I were to switch this, it would switch over to the computer. That's right over there. And there's other uh, servers, uh, this equipment here, which uh, actually does not run or work anymore. I've been told that this particular system here, this was $40,000 alone. And so that's why I think uh, all of this equipment here is probably closer to like $100,000 worth of equipment here. We also have satellite, uh, which isn't, operational um, anymore and that's also very expensive equipment and so we have here uh, the switcher that switches different uh, uh, sources and then we can also do the uh, color bars uh, to switch this to have a, a test pattern type of um, display to come out and so uh, right above here is where we have the TV that's what's playing right now live on the channel this is local cable TV by the way it's not like it's nationwide or anything like that and yes it is my video and I am playing that just so that I can say I've been on TV nonetheless if I were to say for example switch to the color bars there oh sorry the color bars there you'll notice that right over on the monitoring system the uh, test pattern is showing and then there's about a five second delay where the uh, TV or the channel is playing. You can hear the uh, beep, that annoying beep that's playing. And so uh, that's what's going on there. And then I can just switch back to, I think that should be it, yeah. So ultimately everything ends up going to this box here, which is a transmitter. It converts the video and the audio that's coming from this uh, BNC cable here, as well as that little box that has the audio spliced into it. And it converts it to a digital signal that gets carried to that yellow cable with a green connector on it. And that is a single mode fiber cable. And so the whole thing gets transmitted to the uh, cable company. Probably wondering why didn't I just plug this Raspberry Pi straight into that converter box that transmits digitally over the single mode fiber to the cable company well basically if you remember that little converter box had uh, spliced audio cables into it and i didn't want to mess with that rewiring anything because if i mess it up none of the other equipment would be able to transmit properly uh, if they were to ever use it again and so the other reason why i picked this particular device was because of the rca composite uh, video output at the time it was the only device that I had that had this that could integrate with their existing system All I needed was just the adapter which was actually already there plugged it in and uh, the audio cables to XLR That was all that I needed to get this going and uh, the software on here. So the software is XBMC It's great at managing and organizing video content 
much like that broadcasting station there. Uh, you can play video, you can play music through MP3s, and you can play pictures in a slideshow, and you can create playlists as a way of programming all of that stuff uh, to be displayed. So I know I said that this $35 computer replaced thousands of dollars worth of equipment but truth be told all of that equipment in there is still usable uh, it still does work for the most part not everything in there works but enough in there can work and so that particular room in that entire studio is supposed to be used for instructional purposes teaching broadcasting and producing content and all of that stuff still can be used I mean the the medium which is tapes is uh, records in standard def all the cameras probably do in standard def but all that's fine because the channel itself is in standard def it's not in hd so they don't really need to record and edit and broadcast in hd because they uh the channel itself is only in standard def and so all of that the process of producing and broadcasting is still relevant the the how to how to do all of that stuff is still somewhat relevant today even though the equipment may be a little antiquated but it's still good for learning how to uh, manage and run programs and create programs and do all that stuff uh, in that particular class so will this thing stay there and keep running and all the other old equipment will never run again no that's not going to happen first off this is my raspberry pi so is the one that's plugged in there uh, is my own personal raspberry pi and i'm not leaving it there and uh secondly you know i just needed to run this as a sort of a last ditch effort um but uh, i just wanted to illustrate how far we've come along from all that equipment that does those that particular functionality to this 35 dollars uh, equipment that can pretty much do almost the same functionality all right so before i leave i just wanted to say thanks to the obviously the raspberry pi developers as well as the google plus communities uh, i posted a picture of this uh, in that room and it's got so many plus ones and it's been reshared i never thought that anybody would care about that sort of thing of what i've posted but uh thanks to the raspberry pi community on there be sure to follow them and be sure to follow the linux news here community who reshared uh my uh my post and uh follow them because they have much more interesting stories and projects to do with the raspberry pi so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys later